Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Alex Bagidi. Hi, Alex. Welcome back. Hi, let's go. All right. So let's dive into it. We'll talk about success a, a bit later. But for now, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? You know what? I'm going to be super boring. The Lean Coffee. Honestly, Lean Coffee. And I'll tell you why. I have many other ways of doing retro. They're more advanced. And I think picking the right way of doing the retro depends on the context and the situation of the team. But uh, in general, I like to start when I'm starting with a team, I start with a lean coffee just to keep it simple. It's short to facilitate. Uh, it's not too complicated to explain because usually you don't really know the level of the team where they're at, understanding Scrum, you know, the level of maturity of the team. So, yeah, pretty easy to, to, to put in place, to explain and to experience with the team. So, yeah, you just make sure for those who don't know what the lean coffee is, you're making sure you have... Uh, different time box so that the team first uh, put in post-its the different topics they would like to talk about during the retro. Then they vote on the top three or top five of the items they want to talk about a little bit more, a little bit further. Uh, then you set a time box for each of the topics. They go deeper. If they want to add extra time, we can discuss that. But essentially, it's just you build the framework, you build an environment where they can exchange on topics that matters to them. And I think that's what makes it really a fun event because it comes from them and you're just there to facilitate the discussion and the exchange between them. Yeah, I think that's very important, right? So topics that they care about. Lean Coffee is a great example of a format that uh, allows for that because it's it's one that starts with the questions that the team already has. So it's very important, even when we start, to enable the team to feel responsible for the space of the retrospective. They are contributing the content to the retrospective. It's not something that Alex prepares and then brings to the retro. Alex prepares the facilitation, but the team brings the topics that they want to talk about. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes you might have to ask a few powerful questions, you know, just to get them to get deeper in a subject, but uh, at the end of the day, you are there to help them continuously improve. Uh, I don't know if you know about the retrospective poker, pretty cool if you need ideas. It's made by a good friend of mine, Daria Bagina. She has a deck of cards with uh, many ideas of ways to, to do a, a, a retrospective. Pretty interesting. It's just to get some inspiration, get ideas. So uh, I think it's a great tool for a Scrum Master who has lost inspiration. So, yeah, just a recommendation. Absolutely. We'll put the link on the show notes. It's a great idea, right? There's also another tool called Retromat. Yeah. I'll put also the link on the show notes so that people can go and, and check it out. There's so many great ideas for retros out there. So absolutely use those resources. All right, Alex, now we turn our attention to our jobs. So share with us, what does it mean to be a successful Scrum Master for you? It means everything to me. It's, 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 it's why I'm doing this. When I come to the office, when you used to go to the office, but when I start my day and, and, and during the daily or in the first meetings, I see a smile on the face of the team, I'm doing something right. If they are stressed, if they look tense, if they, they you feel you can see that they hate what they're doing, ask yourself, okay, what's going on here? Um, Different ways to, to measure success uh, of a Scrum team uh, based on my, my experience so far was, are we able to deliver something every sprint? Something usable, something that has value for the team and for the organization. Um, is the team having fun working on that project? Are they engaged in the process or not? So all those things and, and many other things like, uh, is the team inspired by the product owner? Does the team understand the impact of their work on the end user? I have a little story about that, actually, because um, uh, the company I was talking about uh, earlier, um, that uh, grocery company, before the pandemic, we were just a regular company building e-commerce features and stuff. When the pandemic hit, it was a Tuesday. We were all in the office working together, having fun, throwing balls and stuff. Cool, you know? The next day, we got a call, we got an email, you cannot come to the office. So now you got to stay home in front of a screen, in front of a camera to talk to your buddy that was next to you. That's not fun. That's a shock. So how do I deal with it as a Scrum Master? 
uh, that that it's a trauma in a way, right? So because you just feel being disconnected, right? So we had to reconnect to something to a bigger purpose, and and I worked with the product owner. Um, and we found a way to make our division clear. Now that we have the pandemic and everybody is in quarantine and confinement, what impact is our work making out there? We used to just build new features and add it to the, the, the website, but now we gotta we gotta help Monique, who is 65, who is stuck at home, live alone, and cannot get out to get groceries. That's our mission now. That's who we are as a team now. We're making a difference for that old lady who needs to eat. So we're building a feature that helps her order with her phone or her computer and get the food delivered, which is a new service we're offering now. So our team is making an an impact in in the community. That's a big deal, right? So this is really the the success for the team and and maybe for us also facilitators, right? Helping the team go through through those those changes in the environment and and, and in their reality, right? So um, I love my job. It's 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 been a it's been an amazing experience, honestly. Yeah, I I, I really like that uh, aspect of coming back to why we do things, like what's the purpose, what's the impact, and uh, of course, first because it it motivates people, right? So it it reduces the stress of working. Work is still stressful, but you understand why it's important, so you're more likely to accept it and and live through it and recover from it because stress does take energy out, even when it's purposeful. And uh, I really like the conversation you guys had with the team, first you and the product owner, and then together with the team about what does it mean for us to be successful? And that's for Monique to get her groceries without getting out of home because she can't, right? Because of the lockdown. For me, that's one of the things that I also try to do with product owners is to come to that kind of story. Like what's the story we tell ourselves of why the work is important? How easy was it to work with a product owner to come back with that kind of story? Like, what process did you use? How how did you get to that? Um, so, as a scrum master, I need to understand my role and my stances because I have different stances as a scrum master. But a product owner also has stances as a PO, right? So, uh, the PO is not just there to write stories, uh, user stories, right? The PO is also there to um, connect the product to the end user to the customer. So that connection is not evident for all the product owners to build that connection. You have the product owner who's going to be a visionary, right? Who's going to be able to inspire them. You're going to have a product owner who's going to be more aligned with experimenting, right? So just helping the product owner understand which options he have, he or she have, has, um, that was helpful. Just um, we, we worked in a little workshop uh, with the product owner and myself, found a way to um, ask ourselves why, why we're doing this product. What's the why? So reconnect with the why as a team, Scrum Master and Product Owner, as a duo, and then go back to the team and share that with the team so that they understand also why they're doing that. Also, celebrating success was key for us. We often forget that, but that was really important, especially in that context of quarantine, to say, hey, guys, yes, maybe we're not in the same room anymore, but we're still, we're still doing great things together. Celebrate success because that just reinforces the purpose, right? It's like, okay, now we're getting this emotional and psychological reward from doing the work, right? This celebrating success. Sit down with your PO, if you're a Scrum Master. Sit, take the time to sit down with your PO and help them to go through their journey as POs because they, sometimes they don't know what to do. Yeah, sit down with the PO and help them. Absolutely. Alex is pointing to the professional product owner book here on the on the video. You guys can't see it, but but he was pointing to it. <laughs> All right, Alex, that was a great story. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.